Amen. Amen. Whoa. What's up, church? Welcome to C4, Christ Center Community Church. I, I also want to start off by saying welcome to all of you joining us online. We are so glad that you've joined us today. Man, you guys are home. Home. I know it's kind of weird because you don't really know what to do anymore. You haven't been here in a while. And it's like, what do we do? Do we sit down? Do we clap? Do we stand? It's like, just kind of take a breath. Breathe in, breathe out. It's like, just know that you're home. This is, this is a place that we have been so wanting for, for community, for fellowship, for the church to come back, and we're so glad that you've joined us today. And so, hey, can I just give you permission? However you want to be today, just be. You know, you want to scream, you want to shout, you want to clap. Hey, this is, a, this is your house too. And so my name's Kamu. I have the privilege of being one of the pastors here at C4. And um, man, when, when I got invited uh, to share today for Mother's Day, I just started praying for every single one of you. Uh, and I didn't know that you were going to sit in here, but I was like, Lord, I just wanted to pray for you being here. Anyone that's coming, God, would you speak a word? And so I'm excited to bring God's word th uh, today. Um, but today is a significant day, right? It's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all you moms. I know the boys are celebrating, but we just want to continue to honor you and celebrate you. Uh, we love you. We, we definitely take advantage of you all the time, but we're, we, we're so grateful that we can take one day to just celebrate, even though we should take every day. Um, I, I, too, have to give a special shout out uh, to my mom. She's put up with me for 37 years now. She might be a familiar face. She serves our production team in the back. Um, but happy Mother's Day, Mom. Love you. Uh, I also want to say happy Mother's Day to my wife. We've been married for 10 years. We have two boys. And uh, we got one more on the way. We got one more on the way. So we're excited about that. I mean, I'm thinking, that's what you get when you got to stay indoors for all of 2020, right? Like, that's what you get. Uh, happy Mother's Day. Now, it wouldn't be Mother's Day, honestly, if I didn't try to do something special for all of the moms here. And for those of you that don't know me, I grew up in the 90s, and, and, and the 90s, man, they had some wonderful R&B jams, like wonderful R&B jams. I mean, you guys remember Boys to Men? You guys remember the jams of Boys to Men? Come on, right? The song. Mama, mama, you know. You know it, sing it, come on. Ooh, you know I love you. Mama, mama, you're the queen of my heart. Your love is like tears from the stone. Mama, mama, I just want you to know like food to my soul right come on a, a little more you guys remember I, i'm gonna give you a little more remember backstreet boys backstreet boys well i mean okay i mean it's cool it's not my mom's song <laughs> let's try it. here it's the mom song of backstreet boys right when i was young just how to grow got that 90s everything I should know Woo! just how to walk without your hand cuz mom you always were the perfect fan oh man come on happy Mother's Day happy Mother's Day to all of you moms I hope that that you know that how special you are there you are all right so today now, we're going we're gonna to continue to celebrate our moms, but today we're going to dive in, and I really believe that today's message is not just for moms. It's not just, it's, it's for all of us. And so turn to your neighbor, tell them, hey, this is for you and me. This is for you and me. Yes. Today we're going to dive in to answering the question, is God enough? Is God enough? Now, I know when you look at this firsthand, maybe you come into church for a while, and you might be thinking, man, when I look at that question, that's an easy question to answer, right? Of course, God is enough, right? And, and you might be wondering, but, is, but for me, I'm thinking, but is he really? You know, and that idea of having enough, I think for us, even isn't something new, especially for those of us in Hawaii, right? You go to your family barbecue, and you, you go up to the line, and it's like, you're only supposed to take as much as you're going to eat, right? You can't take more than that. 
And, and then, especially, and even if you're like one of the first ones in line, you almost have to look at who's in the party. And it's like, oh, I only got to take because I got to make sure, get everybody, get, get enough for everybody, right? Um, I mean, the, I remember growing up and, and I, was, I remember this one trip, visiting family in Hilo. We were at the beach and tuna sandwiches for lunch. I know, it was weird. I, I don't know why this story sticks in my mind, but tuna sandwiches were for lunch. And... I remember my auntie, she's like, ah, come boy, come, eat as much as you want, right? And so I'm thinking, little boy, okay, I'll eat as much as I want. So I start grinding tuna sandwiches, like just eat, I don't, for some reason, I'm hungry, right? All of a sudden, from, it's almost like this hand from the back is about to whack me, but my sister, she's like, hey, stop eating everybody's food, you know? And I had no concept for this idea of making sure that we all have enough. But having enough for us is a big deal, you know? I also think that it's not just me, but I think we all struggle with not having enough. I mean, just think about your Amazon shopping cart. Think about it, right? I mean, you're scrolling, you're scrolling through your Amazon shopping cart, and you're like picking things. Or, oh, you know, I'll put it in there. Maybe just save it for later. You know, not sure if there's an impulse, any impulse buyers in here. This is a few things in my Amazon cart. Father's Day is about a month away. <laughs> Not giving any. Woo. Anyway, um, but we do. We really do. We struggle with sometimes not having enough or wanting to upgrade to the newest thing. Or if only I had this, right, fill in the blank. Now, on a more celebratory note, because I want to pause just a real quick. I, I really do. I think I want to bless a mom in here. And, uh, and because I, I mentioned Amazon, I might want to enable a mom here with anything. And, well, not anything, but for something in your Amazon uh, cart. But I need to find the mom in here who has the most kids, all right? I want to find the mom in here who has the most kids. Anyone have three? Just raise your hand. Three, mo- three, you got three kids. Anybody have four? Keep your hands up. How about five? Five? Did we have five? Four? Four was kind of the magic number. Am I, am I looking at it? I saw four. Yeah, yeah two of you. Okay. Uh, then it's how long have you guys been moms? What was, how, who has the longest? Over 20 years being a mom? 30 years being a mom? Okay. We got that mom right there. Would you join? <laughs> Would you come up? Are you okay to come up? You know? Well, tell you what. I have an Amazon gift card for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Pastor Creighton. Can you just share your name with me? Cheryl. Cheryl. Happy Mother's Day. Oh, visiting mom too. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. I hope that you can get something from your Amazon uh, shopping cart. But hey, the question, is God enough? Now, for a lot of us as followers of Jesus, you know, our starting point in the history of this big God story, right, and it, it is in creation. Of, he, he actually created us. Sorry, my tongue is getting crazy. God created us on purpose for a purpose, right? And for a really long time, uh, the church, us, me, we have sort of communicated only part of this big God story. And I actually want to share with you just a real simple diagram of like the story, right? And for us, We've really only focused, as the church is teaching, sort of like this, this middle two, where when we sin, then we sometimes raise our hand in church, and then we say yes to Jesus, and then all of a sudden now, now we can go to heaven, right? And that's kind of the middle, but there's more to that. The truth is that we were created for dominion over the earth. We were created to build, to create, to caretake in this process. And, you know, if you remember Adam and Eve... Somewhere along the way, they kind of said that God's not enough, right? You remember Adam and Eve, they ate the fruit. Not really sure, you know, we don't want to get into whose fault it was. But in a nutshell, they basically said, hey, God's not enough. Now, sometimes we can think in our, in our minds, right, it could look like, you know, let me take matters into my own hands. Or sometimes we have phrases in our heads like, hey, God, have you been holding out on me? on something, or God, do you really know what's best for me? And a lot of times the dialogue in our head doesn't have to materialize directly at God, but sometimes we might have thoughts like, I need to have control over my health, my finances. The image of what I look like 
toward others is really important to me. You know, I got to keep up with the latest trends, the, the newest phone, the coolest style, the, the current lingo. We even chase comfort. Sometimes instead of running to God, there's something that takes the, we replace him with something else. Now, don't get me wrong, because this talk that I'm bringing today isn't a behavior modification, right? Like, I'm not trying to paint this picture of what it means to be a Christian, a good Christian, right? Dress a certain way, you got to talk a certain way, you have to make sure that you tithe, or you got to do this, do that. No, I mean, that is entirely not what this is. and, And I think that if we even thought that it was, that would be a perfect distraction of how this would derail us from what really is important, like the main thing in all of this, is God enough? Now, you might be asking, you know, what does it, this even mean, right? What does this even look like? How does, what does God being enough look like? And, and I love how there's so many examples in the Bible, right, that we can actually look. And today, I actually get to teach on, on like, one of my favorites. Anytime I get to teach on, on Jesus, Man, it's so exciting, so good, and I love how he's like the perfect example, and he went through a lot of things, right? 100% man, 100% God went through everything that we would, that we would be facing today. Like, he had to face it himself. Now, I want to I ask if we could open up our Bibles into Ma- uh, to Matthew 4. Uh, if you don't have your Bibles, it's okay. You can use a mobile app. You can open up your physical, or I'll even throw the scripture up on the screen, Now, I'm going to start in Matthew 4, but I want to give you Matthew 3 really quickly because I kind of want to give you the context of where we're we're kind of starting. So Matthew 3 in a nutshell, Jesus gets baptized. Holy Spirit descends onto Jesus, and God was like, man, this is my boy. He brings me great great joy. God is a rapper. No, Um, God was proud. You guys are, (laughs) you guys all right? You guys doing doing okay? All right. It was a joke. Just in (laughs) case. God was proud of Jesus. He just got baptized. And I love how Pastor Brett shared two weeks ago where Jesus didn't do a thing. He didn't, he didn't do any ministry yet. He didn't perform any miracles yet. Jesus gets baptized, and God just loves him. I mean, it's a beautiful picture of how God loves his kids, especially us today. Now, Matthew 4, let's start it off. And I'll, I'll read it for you. You can kind of follow along. Here's, here's Matthew 4. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights he fasted and became very hungry. All right, so here's the stage, right? It's being set. Uh, imagine with me. Jesus gets baptized, goes into the wilderness, fasts for 40 days. Man, that, I mean, just think about how hungry right? Uh, Jesus probably is. I mean, when I read, it's so funny. When I read became very hungry in scripture, I feel like that's an understatement. Uh, I couldn't imagine myself doing that. Verse three, it continues. During that time, the devil came and said to him, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. Check out the timing of, of the devil at this point, right? gets baptized, fast for 40 days, super hungry, and then all of a sudden he's like, hey, you know, you're, you're the son of God, right? Why don't you turn this stone into bread? And, you know, for us, it's, we're probably reading and thinking, wow, this is super obvious. I mean, hello. You know, one of those movies where you're kind of looking at the main character, screaming, screaming at him in the, in the screen of like, don't do it. But, but right here in this one moment, huge decision that Jesus has to make. Does he react to the temptation of the devil? Does he take matters into his own hands? Because he does have the power to do this. Like, he actually has the power to satisfy his flesh. Is God enough? And I, and I, I start to think about this. I'm like, man, talking about the desires of our flesh, I mean, 2020, halfway through 2021, we've gone through some things, right? A lot of things that we've had to face. Personally, for me, I feel like I'm at my edge already, and I'm like, Man, I'm getting island fever. Like, get me out of this place. And even though some of the travel might be lifted here and there, I'm still looking to go to Japan. I I can't help. Any Japan lovers in the house? Like, come on. Like, just please. And and so I'm I'm going through this struggle in 2020. I'm getting island fever. All of these things that I'm having to wrestle with. And I'm usually looking forward to something like a Japan trip. It's a place where I'm like, this is where I can rest. 
This is like my remedy for like a really long, hard year, and yet I can't do that. And so in my time with Jesus, I'm thinking, man, this question that I'm bringing you today, I'm actually having to answer for myself. Like, is God enough? Or do, have I been putting things in my life that have been sort of taking the place of where he should be? Now, I'm not saying that vacations are bad, not, not at all. It's just something that I've been wrestling with. And I can't help but think, hey, maybe I'm not the only one in this place. Like maybe, and then it's like, maybe I sh- we should talk about this together. Like, is God enough? You know? Let's continue on. Verse 4, Jesus' response to the devil. No. <clears throat> the scriptures say people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Or, in other words, Jesus, he's just saying, I trust God. I'm not going to use what, what God gave me to satisfy myself. Like, God is enough. And, and it's so cool. Like, God just, Jesus sort of just took that step and said, I'm hungry, yes, but I'm still going to choose Jesus. I'm still going to choose Jesus. Let's continue on. Uh, verse 5 and 6. Then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say he will order his angels to protect you, and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't have to hurt your foot on a stone. Basically, you know, the devil is saying, hey, you know what? Since you trust God with your, your physical, let's, let's take it a step further. Hey, let, why don't you just go jump off a cliff? Because we know scripture, now he's bringing scripture into the mix. It's like we know that the angels are going to catch you. That's what it says. And again, inner dialogue, right? That we're thinking, man, is this something that... We do with God sometimes, right? Where we sort of negotiate or say, um, you know, how much does God love me or test God's will for my life based on circumstance, right? God, if you allow me to keep my job, then I know you'll love me. Or God, my car was broken into. Like, are you mad at me for some reason? Or God, I know you love me. Can you just please heal my auntie from COVID? Now, don't get me wrong. These prayers, super good. Like, honestly, when it comes to prayer, you should really let God have it with all your requests, all your emotion, all of that. But there's a difference because it's hard to kind of start to navigate this, like, is God enough, right? Because the difference in all of this is wherever your heart is. It's the heart of the matter. Yes, you can make your request to God, but is it connected to, is God's love connected to the circumstance or the outcome? You know, like, God didn't love me any less or more. Like, this is the truth. God didn't love me any less or more when I woke up one day and all of a sudden my truck gets stolen, right? Bad day, super inconvenient, really, really hard to go through, but God doesn't love me any less or more. And and the healthiest part about this journey is, is when we can make our requests and then just say, hey, God, you have... You have the outcome. I trust you in the outcome. And that type of trust in God can be challenging. It, it's super hard to do that with God, right? No matter my circumstances, is God enough? No matter what, uh, how much money I have, God, is God enough? No matter my employment, is God enough? I mean, these are real things that like, a lot of people in our community has had to face in this year. Is God enough? Again, When we think about this story that we're in with Jesus, right, the temptation of the devil, super obvious. But what I do think is how the devil will sometimes tempt you and me, I don't think it's going to be as obvious. Is God enough? Next, verse 8. And and we're, we're, we're kind of landing this plane soon. Next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. Now, what could the devil possibly do, be doing right now? Because I thought, right, all the kingdoms were gods, right? Now, if I could rewind the tape for you, remember where we first began this, this journey together with the big God story? You know how creation happened. We were created on purpose for a purpose, right? The devil, he, he in this journey... He wanted to become God, and so he got kicked out of heaven. He's like, nope. So then now sin entered humanity, 
through the deception of the devil with Adam and Eve. And then from that point, we were separated from God. Separated. Now, Jesus, his entire reason for coming to earth to take on the form of a man was to restore the relationship we had with God. Like, that was his, one of his assignments. You know, he needed to, to actually go up, hang on that cross, and die. Now, I know that I'm reminding a lot of us this journey, right? I know, but it, this, this context is really, really important for the moment that Jesus finds himself with the devil. The devil is saying, hey, you can skip all of what you know you have to do. You can skip it. All the suffering, all the agony, you know, going up, uh, being hung on that cross. You can skip all of that. All you have to do is worship me. That's it. I mean, think about that. The kind of temptation that Jesus was faced with. He could skip it all. But what does Jesus say in verse 10? Get out of here, Satan. You know, because the scripture says, you must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Again, he kept choosing God. He kept saying, no, God's enough for me. I trust him in everything that I'm up against. I mean, when you think about how sometimes we might find ourselves with, with thinking, hey, maybe there's a different way of doing Jesus, even, our relationship with God. We may find ourselves, in some ways, taking shortcuts with our relationship with God. I mean, me personally, I can fall short to this. You know, I listen to Christian podcasts every single day. Or I'm running C4 worship, you know, on repeat on YouTube every single day, all day, every day. That's, that's good, right? I mean, it is, I think. <laughs> Pastor Chad, Pastor Brett, always bringing the fire. Does that equate to like this amazing, awesome relationship with God? If we do all of this, is that what that means? Like when life hits, when circumstances hit, is that podcast really enough? And, and today, I am so excited. I mean, I have my own journey, but I definitely, I'm so excited because I'm going to ask one of my sisters to come up and share a little bit about her journey. And she's no stranger to us, but I do want, I do want you to take a, a, a glimpse into a part of our sister Tifa's life and how she's really had to take steps in the last couple months on saying, you know what, God, you're enough. You're enough. And so would you, oh, after she shares, our creative team has, has um, prepared a nice video for us. And I actually wanted to take some time hearing pa Pastor Tifa, a little bit of sharing of her life. And then I actually want to encourage you, hey, would you take just a few moments as this song and video is being played, would you begin to now ask yourself, is God enough? All right, would you welcome with me Tifa as she comes and shares. Thank you so much, Pastor Kamu. You know, typically when you see, him, see me up here, right, I'm either going to preach a message or sing a worship song. But really, um, for these next couple of minutes, I, I'm just going to share very openly and honestly about where I've been at in these last couple of months. And, you know, that question, is God enough, has been resounding, a resounding theme of my life over the last few months. And I think that I've said or I've preached or I believed, you know, being a believer for many years, that, oh, yeah, God is enough. God's enough. He's enough. I'll sing songs about it. I'll do a dance. <laughs> He's enough. And then in the last few months, I've really come to a place to, to really know what that really means. And I've had some really tough moments, and I think all of us have. We talk about 2020 and even up into 2021, right? Well, you know, last summer, some of you parents, you can, you know, we, we got through the first round of online school, and there were some family adjustments and then as the fall approached, fall 2020, we moved into a new home. This is my husband. We moved into a new house, and um, the kids started back to school. And also my job here at C4 also had some adjustments with some new assignments, and I was really excited, happy, just doing my thing. I felt like I was finally finding some semblance of normalcy. I, a solid routine, this ease had settled, and a renewed purpose. Like, I was just really excited. So this was in the fall. And then November 14th, I tore four ligaments in my knee, slipping on water on the floor. I, I slid, I stepped into this puddle, didn't see it, and 
as my, as my body slid, I pop, pop, I audibly heard a disconnect, and it was a searing pain. Those of you, anybody with knee issues, surgeries, yeah, brah, that's a can. Tore his ACL. Shoot. So some of you guys, you know what that's like, and after some of scans, the doctor said, you know what, you're going to need some surgery. Um, so I had surgery in December, a whole month later. So during that month, waiting for surgery, and even post-surgery, I could not walk, I could not drive, and all these things that you take for granted, like just going up the, a flight of stairs, or you need to grab a tissue box, oh shoot, it's in the other room, or different things, right? And I started to become real frustrated, and as the weeks progressed, I actually fell into a depression, and I, I think I could hide it pretty well with the smile on my face, but you know what, it came to this place of just a new level of rage I had, poor, my poor husband, a new level of rage, man, my kids, and here they were trying to serve me and help me, and I'm, I'm just in such a funk, and I was getting depressed because I got caught up in the thinking that what I do defined my value and my worth. So if I can't serve the church, if I can't go to work, what good am I? If I can't take care of my family, what good am I? If I can't complete my goals, dot, 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 what good am I? I just felt stuck for the first time in 37 plus years of just completely feeling like I had lost myself. I'm losing who I am. I found myself getting frustrated and falling deeper and deeper into this mental spiral. I'm losing who I am. What a lie. What a lie I got caught up believing. So some more time passed, and we got in a new couch. And thanks to Auntie, Auntie um, Virginia donated a, a wonderful couch, brand new couch. I sat on this couch. I broke that couch in. Let me tell you, I could not move. He's at work. My kids are at school or whatever. And I watched a couple of shows, you know, binge watched some Dr. Pimple Popper and Cobra Kai. You know, killing time. For those of you that know me, I, this is, I, I was just like, this, there's, I hate this. And, and it seems kind of silly. You know, there are, there are um, you know, but that's just where I was at a few months ago. And, and then I was just over it. And so I began to sit with the Lord, quite literally, <laughs> quite literally. And when I say sat, I mean that I made an intentional and deliberate focus to sit and to meet with him. Maybe five minutes, maybe it was an hour, maybe it was 30 minutes, maybe it was whatever. Maybe I would read, maybe I would pray, maybe I would just sit in silence. It was either meet him or meet my thoughts and stare at the wall. I, you know what? No, I'm going to meet him. And I wouldn't say for one second that God twisted my knee. He didn't do that. He didn't, th th life, it's a human, life, we get hurt. But does he work all things out for the good of those? Yes, he, he was working it out. And I had some hard, hard conversations that I don't think I would have had, had I not had to sit on my butt for, for months, for months. And so in between Zoom work meetings, I sat, I sat. And I think that prior to my injury, right, I, I, I would have, I have said, God is enough. My identity became all him, all him. In that sitting, in that place of forced Sabbath, he met me. I can stand here today and by his strength, in faith, even if my legs no work, you are enough. Even if I don't preach another sermon or sing another song, you are enough. You are enough. And so, you know, during those times, I'm like, okay, Jesus, I'm in this, I'm in a season of surrender. Okay, you want, you want me to slow down? All right. I'm in a season of surrender. And he said, no, 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 no. You are not in a season of surrender. This is a lifetime of surrender. A lifetime of surrender. And so this is just a glimpse of the last couple of months and, or November, I can't even count. But yeah, um, thank you so much. God, you're enough. He's enough. I love you guys.
than I am right now Wasn't holding you up So there's nothing I could do to lay you down It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud And I'll never be more loved than I am right now
Wow. God is enough. God is enough. But how do we do it? How do we make sure that God is enough? And it, it's really cool in this last year, we as a church have been pursuing that, like fervently. And a lot of ways, in a lot of ways, we, we use fresh fire on, on, on weekday mornings where all we do is just pursue God very purely, that there isn't things that we have to do because it's really difficult to figure out, is God enough? You can't will yourself. You can't, like, force yourself. There, there's way too many things in life that goes on for you to try to just, like, no, God's enough. And you're going to do that with your own strength because every time you do that on your own strength, you're always going to fall. Like, and, and, and really, it's like, okay, then what do I have to do? What do I have to do? And it's like, you got to seek Jesus. You got to be with him. You got to meet with him. And honestly, I have one challenge for you, one takeaway, one thing that I want to say, hey, for the next five days, would you just take some time? And I'm going to put it up on the screen. Oops. 30-minute challenge. Five days for 30 minutes a day, device and distraction free. Would you just carve out time to sit? And this isn't like on your way to work in your car, you can do this. This isn't like while you're sitting on the toilet, you can do this. This is like dedicated time that you can carve out and just ask three questions. I'm giving you examples. Like how would you describe me as your son and daughter, or daughter, God? Right? What is important to you, God? Is there anything you want to change in me or do in me, God? And it's just taking the time to sit and do this. I mean, if, if you want more, it's like, come join us on Fresh Fire any single day of the week. Come join us on a Saturday night. Like, all we're trying to do is pursue God. Pursue God. To, to answer that question, yeah, God is enough for me. God is enough. And, and I know you'll figure it out. In fact, I actually wanted to ask you if we could do it just right now together as a community. Take about a, a, maybe two minutes, right? Um, I'll ask you more to play, play a little bit. And just take the first question. You can take out your phone, take out some paper, and just ask God. We're going to do this together. Ask God, hey, God, how would you describe me as your son and daughter? Now, it might take a couple seconds, a minute or two, to actually allow the, the noise of the world to stop clouding your mind. But maybe at like 59 seconds, maybe at a minute, you start hearing a whisper of how God sees you. I mean, that's a, that's a perfect start on what it means to try, to try to do this with us together. And so I'm going to pause. We'll take about a, maybe a minute or two, and then I'll come back and close. moments.
God is enough. God is enough. And I truly believe that God wants to do some incredible things in your life in this season. And it may not materialize into doing something, but he definitely wants to work on your heart. He wants to meet you every single day. He wants to bring healing to your families, to your marriages. He wants to restore things in you. Is God enough? Is God enough? Can I pray for us? Father, thank you so much for this time together as a family. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters that you would begin to yeah, reveal yourself that as, as we take these moments throughout these next couple days to just sit with you, would you blow our minds, Lord, with the depth and the width and the length of how much you love us. Would you show yourself to us? Cause our hearts to draw closer to you. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, in the same spirit of, of Mother's Day and how we want to continue to bless and honor, I actually wanted to, Pastor Creighton would like to come up and, and just share a little bit or even pray uh, for all of us and our community. And so would you please welcome with me Pastor Creighton, our senior pastor. Yeah, what a special day. What I want to do is just as a family, for us to be able to lift our moms up in prayer. So would you join me? So Lord, we just come before you and we lift up all of the moms online and in this room. Only you, Lord, can fully appreciate the way you've designed a mother's heart and the influence that a Christian mom can have on their kids. And I just also want to acknowledge, Lord, that this day, Mother's Day, can just present a lot of mixed emotions to moms. Where you have moms, Lord, that are just burdened every minute of the day because their children have gone wayward or lost in the world or distant from you. Or just lifting up a lot of women who just for some reason or the other could not have children. And they feel robbed of the experience of motherhood. And I just pray for all of the women here who are aging or just suffering from health issues, Lord. And just the enemy can just be eroding their sense of identity, purpose, and even their dignity. And lastly, Lord, just as a C4 family, we just lift up moms who have experienced just this overwhelming hurt and pain and sadness because of the loss of a child. So, Lord, we lift them up to you. And just as Pastor Kamo was mentioning, just no matter what moms are going through, what they're experiencing, that we encourage them, Lord, to come back home, that as they turn to you, as they seek you, Lord, they will find you. As they draw close to you, you will draw close to them, that you would meet them in a very personal way. Lord, do it now. Just fill them with your peace. Fill them, Lord, with healing. Just fill them, Lord, with your love. We come together, Lord, as a family, lifting up our mothers today. We praise you, Jesus, that you are enough. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.